Greetings, everyone. This is Rock and Roll Spot Connection with, with the Weekly Comic Book Roundup. We've already covered this week's X Men books as well as the issue of Alien and this week's Star Wars books, which brings us to this week's Avengers titles. Kicking things off with the Avengers Annual, which is a part of Infinite Destiny, which is the conclusion, actually, of Infinite Destinies. So, um, this year's Marvel Annuals have all uh, taken a cue from the. Uh, are all following the, well, mostly following the concept of the hosts of the Infinity Gems, uh, stones, being revealed. Now, so far, um, we've had, four, we've seen the hosts of four of them. The Reality Gem, which is what hosted by, by uh, Star, a.k.a. Ripley Ryan. Uh, over time, host time host of time stone. The Prince of Power has the Power Stone, and uh, the uh, Ah, yes, and Quantum has the Space Stone. Now, some, not, all, not every annual has dealt with the Infinity Stone. Some of them have just been regular annuals, but we also have the Infinite Fury backup, which we'll get to after we get, get through our A story. So, keep in mind that we've had uh, a Captain America annual and an Iron Man annual. Each, each one actually tied directly into the Infinite Destiny story. So, the issue we get to the diner, a... Uh, a young robot is uh, discussing um, the term robot and philosophical thoughts on on robots with some locals who really aren't there to talk to him about philosophy. Um, Cap and Tony are discussing what uh, you know the whole thing with the Infinity Stones. Um, Back at the diner, um, the young robot is attacked, but he's saved by a truck driver who has a cybernetic limb. Uh, turns out that the, gu the guys who attacked the young robot are members of the Sapien League, or at least connected to them. And so, John Cray, the truck driver who saved the young robot, Gives the robot a ride. Um, now, part of the setup with Tony and uh, Tony and Captain America is that Tony has taken the telemetry from his father, Quantum, as well as additional energy uh, readings from uh, Project Pegasus, and he now knows what what the energy readings look like when the an Infinity Stone bonds to someone. So they'll be able to figure it out. So with with the truck driver and the robot, they're uh, headed down. Now it turns out that the uh, the young robot's whole thing is to uh, figure out whether or not robots have souls or not. Um, they, he figures that it's clear that uh, you know humans do and mutants. I mean, all with all of the uh, demonic events that have happened. Anyway, while. Uh, they're eating dinner. Well, sitting down for dinner. The robot isn't eating, obviously. The Sapien League shows up and attacks the diner that they're eating at. As they attack, they're about and are about to get to uh, just to uh, in terms of later retire our robot friend. The Soul Stone appears. And so, the host of Soul Stone now calls himself Multitude. That's what they are. He has, a, he has billions of souls within, within, within him now. 
But uh, Iron Man and uh, Captain America show up. Cap calls in reinforcements. And while Cap does, Cap tries to talk things out, well, multitude summons forth an army of souls to attack our two Avengers. Thing is, the souls are rather easily beaten. And mostly realize this because there's so many. But if it's just, say, you know, the, the, the gem, the stone only has so much power. And uh, that power is divided among the, the souls. And so, he focuses. A Captain America's soul attacks, uh, fight, ends up fighting uh, Iron Man, while an Iron Man one fights Cap. But uh, multitude is arguing with the stone with the stone about saving John Cray. After all, Cray helped him, you know. And but they so multitude manages to uh, you know stop the fight, uh, you know, stop the fight, and basically just say, "Hey, look, you know, well, Cray and the st or, multitude and the stone." But the stone speaking says, "You know, our." our, our my our host wants you know wants this this person to be you know to seek to be given medical attention. Basically, basically, hey, get him medical attention, and we'll stop fighting. But uh, the Soul Stone states that uh, it wants to be more than. They once were, it and the stones want to be more than they once were. So they're combining themselves with people to become something new. When uh, Iron Man says like evolution compares to evolution and alchemy, though the Soul Stone eh, corrects him by saying no synthesis, and multitude flies off on a creature on a creature of some type. Planning to find the others with the Soul Stone. Or with the others with the Infinity Stone, so they can all, all come together and, well, discover what the final product of synthesis is and how they will change the world. Good A story, uh, you know, nothing remarkable. Um, we still don't know who has the Mind Stone. Our B story, Infinite Fury, well, in part seven, well, first off, in part six, Nick Fury managed to unbrainwash himself, and in part seven, he dresses the Falcon, went out with uh, Nighthawk to take down Star. They knocked her out, but Fury, no longer uh, brainwashed under, and under uh, Nighthawk's control, Shot Nighthawk. Nighthawk survived because of bulletproof costume. But he explains he explains the whole thing. He had he built himself a contingency plan in his own brain, a hard reset, break, cla break glass in case of menticide. The trigger being a tattoo on his chest. And actually, he, Nighthawk is impressed and says, "You know, they could have been, the two of them could have been a hell of a team." But Nighthawk says that if he has to change the world without Fury, well, he will. But Fury decides he's got to track down. He's got to track down the Infinity Stone hosts himself and imprison them. So far, he's got one star. And well, we already saw what happened there, in Black Cat Number Eight. Um, honestly, Infinity Fury was, was really. Was actually really good, and I, I would have, I kind of, honestly, I could have done without most of the annuals if we could just, could have just gotten a full length Infinite Fury miniseries instead. But oh well, whatever. Anyway, moving on to our next book, we got Black Widow number ten, Legacy number fifty. Yeah, it's. I wish that they had a. Uh, 
a, a checklist in the like in the back to say eBay where they started with where their issue one was, but oh well. So where we left off, Iran, Black Widow, along with Yelena Belova and Anya Corazon were had taken the fight to Apogee, while Craig and uh, Lucy were working on a cure for Apogee and his fo or Apogee's followers. Back at, at the web, Craig is, has uh, done it. He's got the, he's got it made. And he's also figured out how to, how, to, how to make it gaseous. Lucy has put on some more active wear. And, well, they're going to have to go out and uh, they're going to get the antidote to the Widows. And Lucy figures, if necessary, she's not going to just go out there and use her powers. But if she needs to, she will. Um... One of Apogee's followers burns out in front of his breast, but of course, no one believe Apogee's followers don't believe her. But uh, turns out that uh, Black Widow called in a, a, some additional backup in the form of Kate Bishop, Hawkeye, and so Hawkeye, Yelena, and. Uh, Anya and Lucy eventually work on taking down Apogee's followers while Natasha goes after Apogee. They duke it out and eventually Apogee's mask is removed. But he uh, uses up the rest of his uh, serum and becomes even bigger and stronger and yeah. Apparently she recognized him. I, I, it's, it, it feels like she's, we're supposed to know who he is, but it's not Hyde, but yeah, I don't know. Um, Widow manages to take down Apogee with the help of, uh, of Lucy, who in fact sticks him with, the, with one of the remaining liquid ant versions of the antidote, knocking him into a vat of something. But her powers have gone, have, are burning, are starting to, to make, potentially speaking, burn out. And so, Widow gets her with the antidote. But Lucy still can't, while she's, she's somewhat powered now, she still can't turn off her power, at least in her arms. They go back, the two go back inside, and, uh, the Olio are basically, you know, trying to, uh, are not happy that their power's been taken from them. Natasha gives them a solid speech about, you know, yeah, hey, I, you'll, you, none of you will, I imagine I, you know, I get wanting power. I do, but this is not the way to go about doing it. Lucy then chimes in and kind of says, hey, look. The route you guys were going was not a good route to go for power, okay? Shows off her electric hands. You know, she can't, she'll never be able to touch anyone ever again. As far, you know, at the moment, she'll never be able, be able to touch anyone skin to skin ever again. And uh, the widows, along with Anya, Hawkeye, and Lucy, leave. With uh, Hawkeye suggesting they go eat because she's starving, and Anya agree. And even Natasha reminded herself that they had their priorities firmly in order. However, back at the vats of chemicals, it does seem that Apogee has survived, and that is where the issue ends. Solid end of the arc. Um, seriously, Kelly Thomas's Black Widow is a mate. Is great. It's it's so it's so great to read. And yeah, there really hasn't been a bad issue yet. 
Um, I remember, you know, first reading, I tried to see if there was some, something about saying who it was exactly happy she was, but it really doesn't say it, and I, I, the look is familiar, but not, yeah, it's, it's like there's a distant bell ringing, but yeah, can't figure out where it's at. Moving on to our next book, though, we've got Thor, number 16. Where we left off... Thor's uh, Molnir was being wasn't behaving, and so he left it in. So Thor left it in Avengers Tower. But, uh, the problem with Molnir aren't the only thing costing Thor sleep. The other thing is what he saw when he looked in the Black Winter. But the issue begins, he's explaining to, he's telling Jane about the, the dream he constantly has. Thanos wielding Mol an Infinity Stone empowered Molnir, defeating him thoroughly. After, after defeating, you know, all the Avengers. And it ends with uh, Thanos crushing Thor's head with his boot. But uh, Jane's trying to help him, you know, talk him through, you know, talk. Yeah. Jane's trying to figure out his, his shtick. But uh, Thor gets himself some hot dogs. Then we find out that, you know, I mean, he can speak every language on the planet. He's been, you know, and, and he can, and he can even, you know, Adapt to a degree of the uh, the appropriate regional dialect, but they're cut short because, well, something's going down. It's the wrecking crew, and so Jane pop, you know, Valkyrie's up, but uh, notably absent is Thunderball. But, uh, Jane goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with Brecker, and who then gets smacked in the face by Thor, wielding Brecker's own crowbar. Pile driver and bulldozer just kind of look, and just like, and decide, nope, they're done. But, uh, before Thor can give chase, Hugo and Mugen show up. Freya has summoned him. So, but, uh, before, before they, before he, they both go their separate ways, Jane asks, or states that while Thor is, you know, talking a lot about wanting to be a good king, but talking about it down here with her eating hot dogs, and so just, what is he afraid of? He says he isn't, but then the, the, the ravens show up, and so, He goes to singing for Savannah Heim, where he runs into Odin. But a creature shows up, and uh, do them, the two of them fight it, defeat it. Though Odin notes that Thor doesn't have Molnir with him, and asks him where it is. And as they're fighting the creature, though, it is suddenly and swiftly defeated by a new arrival who decapitates it in one fell swoop. In one fell swing. There's in fact two new arrivals who, were, who showed up, but the one getting the kill, or the, but the kill itself belongs to Freya. In her hawk hunter armor, it actually looks really friggin' sweet. I'm not even gonna lie. The only uh, the the sword is cu is cartoonishly overblown, but other than that, I mean, that's a that's a damn fine look. I love it. I'm digging it. Like that—that's that, that, friggin' that Final Fantasy VII Buster Sword size. And with Frey is, of course, Angela. The two would like to speak with uh, with Thor, presumably also with Odin, but well, mainly with Thor. That is where the issue ends. And I was to say, um, okay, it, it was a, it was a 
it was kind of a, a lull as you, you know, to start off the, I think to start the new story. Or was, actually, I think Revelations began in the last issue. Yeah. Yeah. We're in our middle chapter of Revelations. But, uh, I'm really stoked to read Donny Cates writing, uh, Angela. <laughs> anyway, moving on to our next book, we've got Captain, United States of Captain America, number three. This will be our last book for the video. So where we left off, uh, Cap Cap Captain America, Sam Wilson, and Steve R Rogers, we're going, we're trying to track down a thief who has stolen Steve's shield. And apparently seem to be going after members of the Captain's Network, a uh, group of, uh, of people throughout the country that have also taken on the man that on a much smaller scale than Cap or, or Sam or and Steve or Sam ever did have taken on the mantle of Captain America, some of specific regions. In this issue, we meet uh, Joe Gomez, the Captain America of the, Kick of the Kickapoo tribe. But the issue begins in northern New Mexico with. Uh, Sam, with Steve and Sam chasing down the uh, shield thief, and eventually figuring it out, figuring out it's Speed Demon. After all, Pietro would never. It's just it, the, the thief is a speedster. Pietro would never wear uh, Cap's colors. He's too he's too proud. Wizard's still dead, so Speed Demon. But we find out that Speed Demon's been busy. So we got a, an F-16 in South Dakota during fighter wing exercises. The pilot was barely able to eject. For the, we're doing the 4th of July parade in Guthrie, injuring 17, which Sam says feels like insult to injury. But uh, there turned out that one of the cap one of the, so one of the captains that was nearby, Joe Gomez. Joe wants to show Cap something though. A room dedicated to Cap. All manner of old Cap memorabilia, including pictures, including a, a mugshot of Red Skull. And Steve asks, why him? And first Joe starts by saying, you know, I say, you don't remember me, do you? But, uh... Joe tells Steve that he doesn't need, you know, he doesn't need to be his... He doesn't need to be his hero, but he inspired Joe to be one. And so, they, they talk some more and uh, figure, they're trying to figure out what the uh, target's going to be. Best they've got is Monroe Elementary School, the integration site, Ground Rules Board of Education. But, uh, Joe shows up in his costume, as we see on the cover, and uh, at the school they're attacked by, by yes, Cynthia Schmidt. It is, it's confirmed that yeah, it, Speed Demon's partner is Sin, but there's somebody else with her who's apparently pulling the strings, and it's not Speed Demon. That said, Joe's not in the best of shape. We find out that there's a uh, an indigenous uh, Man running for governor, he's going to speak at the school. So the next day at the uh, at, next day in Topeka, he's speaking and or he's not speaking at the school, but he's speaking in Topeka. But uh, the Shield Thief plans to as attempt to assassinate the uh, gubernatorial candidate, but Bucky stops it, prevents it. Joe manages to. Get a nice uh, solid hit on uh, Speed Demon, but he manages to escape. Joe goes to the hospital, and uh, now Bucky is also on the case alongside Steve and uh, Sam. They're trying to figure out what's, what's going on. Sadly, though, it turns out that uh, the gubernatorial candidate that was the target of the, of the attack has opted to drop out of the gubernatorial race. Uh, we get a write-up on on uh, 
Joe Gomez, um, and we get a backup story, which basically it it picks up that the whole thing where Joe bringing up that he doesn't recognize him. Apparently, the story is years ago. Um, they stated that uh, Joe is a, a jack of all trades, horse the men, work a crane, paint whatever he needs. Favorite is building, is building houses. But um, he's working a crane, and on the lunch break, the wrecking crew show up. <laughs> Two books with the wrecking crew in one week, right? Um, Joe drops a girder on Bulldozer, but uh, that just makes Bulldozer mad, and apparently the crew's been hired to take down the, the mayor. But, uh, Joe manages to uh, trip Bulldozer off on top of the crane, but well, he's not to his side quick hastily, and so maybe his bowline isn't the best. You know, he falls, except that Captain America grabs his hand and helps him back up, which of course inspired Joe to become the Captain America of the Kickaboo Tribe. And that is where the issue ends. I guess, I think this has probably been, probably been the best uh, issue in the series so far. Um, I think there's two issues left or so, something like that. But I think it's really been the best issue, the best of the three. Um, and it's nothing against any. It's it's not a terrible idea. It's a perfectly passable book. But you know, I don't know. Just. Um, I don't. I, I, I don't know what the, this one just felt better. Just like just at least just a little bit. But uh, anyway, uh, that's it for now. As always, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. Links to my Facebook, Twitter, Patreon, and PayPal will be found in the description box down below. This is Rock and Roll Spock signing off, saying, "Live long and rock hard."